Hi and welcome to this VR tuning guide for Race Room. But before we kick into that, I'm going to introduce you to an application called FPS VR, which helps us make this video. So, FPS VR is available on Steam, it's just £2.89. It's a very simple application that pops up a persistent window in your VR view, displaying your live frame rate, average frame rate, along with other useful performance metrics, uh, such as your reprojection percentages, uh, CPU and GPU, and memory loads. So it's a bit like Fraps or the screen overlay in MSI Afterburner, if you like, uh, but for VR. It's designed for Steam VR compatible headsets, so currently HTC Vive and upcoming Pimax 5K and 8K headsets. However, Windows Mixed Reality owners have reported it works perfectly well for them too. Um, sadly, there's no current plans for Oculus Rift support. Up next is the footage recorded with game settings we're going to cover later. I do want to say first, um, the recording isn't displaying the same sharpness uh, that appears on my Vive. Uh, I'm not sure if it's an OBS issue or how it's being recorded through the Steam VR display mirror. I recorded the race several times um, and this is the best I managed. I just wanted to lay that out um, as the recording isn't terrible, uh, but it's definitely not the exact representation of the image quality um, I felt I experienced. Um, so I just wanted to be fair to the game. Uh, with that said, and back to our tuning, uh, Race Room has some uniquely labelled graphic settings uh, which I haven't seen in any other game. So initially it can be tricky to know what some of them do or how they may impact performance. Um, so hopefully we can remove some of the, the mystery in this video. My tuning process was to set everything to low and work upwards. Uh, but first I needed to address the resolution. At the default of 100% super sampling, Race Room was very blurred for me. Um, the 1080 Ti can easily cope with 160% super sampling. Anything from 140 to 160 improves sharpness by a staggering measure. Um, you'll need to find what works for you if your GPU is sitting below this tier. And of course the latest 20 series Nvidia cards uh, will be great at 160% too. Now we pop into the in-game graphics options in Race Room and begin targeting individual settings. Uh, from low and running a race from the back of the grid to make sure we're testing the most GPU stressful situations. Um, if everything ran fine and FPS VR was displaying favourable metrics, I'd quit the race and make a change or two and just repeat the process of racing again. It's trial and error and a bit of a time sink, uh, but of course worth the effort. And having FPS VR to check against sped things up, um, as I no longer just relied on pure visual perception. Being able to reference the frame rate data and reprojection numbers uh, during racing just took out the guesswork. Okay, here's the final race room graphic settings for all our testing. Uh, so let's bounce through the options one by one. So from the top, toggle mirrors is obvious enough. Um, so of course we need to see what's coming up from behind. Track detail um, are things like trees and buildings. Medium gave us plenty of trackside objects. Um, low setting was a bit sparse and revealed some of the uh, basic textures in the far background scenery which were previously concealed. Um, so I recommend medium if you can. It just makes the world look more alive. But you could if need be run with low in order to enable a higher super sampling ratio. Um, if running a slower graphics card. Car LOD distance setting, um, LOD means level of detail, so adjust uh, the visual detail of the other cars at different distances. For VR, low is fine, anything far away in VR already lacks fine detail. Particle detail, that's dust, smoke and gravel. Uh, we've chosen low for that one. Tire marks, that's tire marks left by cars that build up during the race. I, I turned it off, I couldn't really tell any difference to performance on or off. Uh, but at the same time, I didn't observe any tire marks being laid down. It's probably one of those settings to test yourself to see if there's any benefit. Next up is Specular. That's the sun reflections on the track. Uh, it makes the track look a bit more vibrant and less uh, a flat grey colour. No noticeable performance impact uh, for me. Um, I'd say it's one of those you'd drop if you're working on those small margins of performance gains. Car reflection quality. Um, that's straightforward. Um, we have that on low. It's, it's nice for the visuals. Track animations, that's the animated marshals and mechanics. I left it on, uh, but like tyre marks, um, it's not a necessity, but certainly adds to the overall immersion. Shadow's always a big GPU hog, uh, but for the sake of immersion, um, it's hard not to have them at least on low. Onto car shadows, uh, cars can look a bit strange with no shadows. Uh, they can appear to float around the track without them, um, so low is a good compromise. Um, with contact shadows, I found this one confusing because I didn't notice any difference in the game by changing the number. Um, I was led to understand you set this number to the number of cars around you that cast shadows, so technically you should improve performance if you set it at a lower number. Uh, maybe it doesn't have any effect in VR, 
default was 15 I tried that um, I ran it at 5 and then 3 um, I'm either missing something or it doesn't do anything for me in VR um, if you know any different let me know in the comments I'd be interested to know uh, next is shadow split um, that's a shadow scaling feature uh, it enhances the appearance of shadows um, but it's a hit to performance so we're leaving that one off multi sampling uh, that's a type of anti-aliasing that targets the graphic geometry to reduce jaggies um, even though we're running a high super sampling percentage that doesn't completely eliminate all the shimmering edges uh, so I'm using 8 times AA um, and this does a good job at suppressing the shimmering effect for me uh, for less powerful GPUs it's probably something to reduce or not have at all um, or you could try lowering the super sampling and have some anti-aliasing um, so you want to try a few configurations to find a balance um, uh, both of these have quite big performance impacts um, FXAA, um, I'm not a fan of this type of anti-aliasing um, it's more like a filter that softens the entire picture uh, it's low impact to the graphics card but it can lead to an undesirable blurry image um, I recommend you leave it off um, it, it does hide a multitude of sins um, but it is at the expense of having kind of like an out of focus blurry image Bloom, uh, we have that off, it's a light glow effect uh, it's not worth the performance hit Depth of field, I've turned it off. Uh, I'm not sure if it actually works in VR. I didn't bother because um, you wouldn't want to reduce your um, distance viewing in VR. It's already compromised by the resolution, so it makes no sense to turn it on. A motion blur, we have that off. Um, it's a feature you wouldn't want in VR anyway, um, and that's followed by motion blur quality here. Uh, we'll skip that. Um, it's, it's already off on the motion blur setting, so it doesn't really matter what the quality is set at here. Uh, light shafts, that's sun rays. I turned it on, but it turned itself off in the settings when I checked back later. Um, so I just skipped this one as not VR compatible, or at least not compatible with some of the lower settings we've chosen elsewhere. Uh, lens effects, I turned it on here, but I don't think it adds this effect in VR. I didn't see a difference on or off. Uh, it could be something subtle I missed, uh, but I suspect it's not active in VR. Track texture quality, this is the resolution of the textures used on the track. Uh, we can run this at high. Um, and I think most people will be able to run it on high too. Car texture quality, um, again we're running with high settings here. Texture quality settings rely on the available GPU RAM. Uh, the 1080 Ti we have in our rig um, has plenty to spare, it's 11 gigs, uh, so it's not an issue. Lower end cards uh, may find the high settings for track and car textures reduces performance because the GPU memory um, is running out. Uh, so keep this one in the back of your mind in case you need to adjust the down a notch. If performance um, seems compromised and all the other settings seem okay, it could just be um, the a RAM issue. Rear view mirror quality, low is just absolutely fine. Shaders, this covers the overall lighting and shadow quality. Um, medium looked good to me. On low, some exposed parts of the track, um, the direct sunlight made the tarmac appear too bright, almost white. Um, so medium is the best balance, I think. Corner markers. Um, that's just added signs um, on the track pointing out corners really for learning new tracks and for beginners um, so I've chosen off for me uh, visible cars this is an interesting one um, and it can alter the performance quite a, by quite a bit so we'll cover this one in more detail um, so the number we set here caps the number of cars nearest to us we can actually see on the track so in our 20 car race I didn't notice the missing cars when the visible cars were capped at 15 um, I also tested with 20 visible cars yeah, you can tell the difference by running uh, the races back to back um, when you actively observe the differences, such as on long straights um, or at the beginning of the race. Uh, but when running 15 visible cars, um, it didn't break the immersion, um, as 15 is, a, is plenty to see around you. Um, you're not really gazing that far ahead and counting cars. Um, to give you a good reason why you wanna, want to adjust this, the difference in reprojection at the start of the race was 20% reprojection with 20 visible cars and around only 10 with 15 visible cars. Um, that's a decent difference with just 5 cars. Um, during the rest of the race, uh, when things weren't bunched up, it stuck around 10% reprojection for our 20 visible car setting and as low as 3% for 15 visible cars. Um, and as reprojection means we're not actually maintaining 90 FPS, uh, those missing frames um, have to be faked by reprojection. Uh, you can maybe tinker around the 10 to 15 mark if your PC is struggling and see what works for you and doesn't break the immersion too much. Um, it's definitely worth having this cap. Uh, we're seeing a very meaningful difference in the performance between just those five visible cars. Opponent cockpits. I didn't try this on. Um, I'm going to assume the obvious. Uh, it is what it says on the tin. I can't see into the other cars from my seated position, so I turned it off. Um, it just seemed logical. 
And that's the final setting and onto the final words. Um, at the settings we're using on my 1080 Ti, I'm getting for the most part a solid 90 FPS, dipping into the high 80s and not too much reprojection. 4% uh, or less when testing without OBS recording, which is great, uh, and we're not noticing it kicking in, uh, which is very important. As a tip uh, that I found useful for tuning here, if you focus on the reprojection as a way to balance your VR settings, anything under 10% gives you a very good experience. Uh, when you hit 15 and higher, things can become noticeable in certain situations. Uh, high reprojection ratios are less noticeable in slow moving scenes. In sim racing, uh, high reprojection can easily be observed during overtaking or when cars are panning across the front of your bonnet. And you can see those cars skipping from one location to another. Uh, your graphics card is unable to render the frames quickly enough at this point and reprojection is unable to completely compensate. Uh, but it does disguise the image from stuttering completely. Yeah, if you look out for those sorts of things, um, you'll have a good idea of um, how well things are running on your current settings. Back to the app. Um, as a recap, it's called FPS VR. I suppose I didn't talk huge amounts about this software in the video. Technically, it's pretty basic in concept, but very, very handy uh, and was used for outbalancing the settings in the video. OK, and that's me done for this video. Um, I'll leave the remainder of the race to complete. I'm off, uh, so thanks for watching. Feel free to leave comments if you have any more race room tips to share uh, that I may have missed um, or any other comments. Um, much appreciated. And if you found the video useful, uh, please poke the like button. Um, it's always helpful. Thank you very much. Um, and that's it. Take it easy and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye for now.